Hello, hope you're doing well, and welcome to another sketchbook session. I don't do these very often, so if you're unfamiliar, this is basically a type of video that I do sometimes in which everything is just a lot more relaxed and a lot less polished than most of the other content that I put out here on the channel. It's basically just a chilled out kind of space for you guys to come and relax, but it also gives me a chance to, I don't know, just kind of draw and talk about things that are completely irrelevant to any of the other ongoing projects that I've got going on. So yeah, before we get started with this miscellaneous art video, uh, hopefully you have a cup of tea and a snack ready, maybe something to occupy your hands, uh, whether you want to draw along with me or craft something or just sit and listen in, whatever is the comfiest option. So over the last few weeks, and uh, honestly for the past like forever since about March, uh, I have been super super busy pretty much non-stop with a bunch of back-to-back -back work for various different videos and projects and stuff like that. And uh, actually I still am in the middle of a big old batch of work even as I'm recording this, like <laughs> the grind never stops. Um, <laughs> But every now and then, uh, at least I find, you do kind of need to take an afternoon off, take a day, and just do something else in order to like recharge your batteries and refresh your brain, you know, keep you, keep you ready to roll. And for me, perhaps ironically, uh, the best way to get a bit of a recharge from all of my various drawing projects is to sit down and draw some more. Specifically for me, it's really refreshing to be able to find a little bit of time to draw something that is just completely unrelated to any work that I might have going on. So the artwork that you can see unfolding on screen right now is a little bit of time I spent doing exactly that. Just a bit of personal downtime artwork that isn't for any kind of project, uh, it's just 100% just for fun. There is however a bit of context behind it which might be fun to talk about, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and talk about it. Uh, <laughs> So this character is called Felix. Um, this is not the first time I've drawn him by any measure. Uh, I've actually posted some artwork of him to my various social media art places a handful of times before now. But this is the first time that I've ever drawn him here on the channel in a video, so I suppose he might be due for a proper introduction. Felix is my player character in a home game of Dungeons & Dragons called Curious Case that I play with some fabulous friends from over in America. He is a warlock, uh, Pact of the Tome, although I, I can never remember the name of his specific patron feature class, I don't know what they're called. Uh, it's either Lurker of the Deep or the Great Old Ones or something like that. Either way, he's basically rocking the Cthulhu package, you know, a, a lot of water-based stuff, a lot of tentacles, that kind of thing. Except in our campaign at this point in time at least, uh, that specific brand of terrifying deep sea monster warlock patron is currently taking the shape of a really cartoony, annoying floating squid creature uh, wearing those like triangular Gurren Lagann sunglasses called Kevin. Uh, Kevin's great, we love Kevin. Now. We didn't when the campaign started, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> I'll see if I can put a picture up on screen actually of some of the like doodles we've done of him over time or maybe like I think I still have the picture that inspired his appearance like knocking away somewhere. So uh, yeah, Felix's warlock patron basically looks like this. Hopefully there's an image on screen right now. And <laughs> courtesy of one of our wonderful DMs, he also has the voice of an American surfer bro. So he basically just pops up in, in Felix's periphery like, what's up, bro? What kind of crazy necromantic shit are we gonna do today, bro? Like, <laughs> it's so dumb, I love it so much. <laughs> And um, actually, while we're speaking of the DMs who gave him that fantastic choice of a voice, um, <laughs> uh, their names are Bree and Erin. Uh, you might know them from a couple of other like projecty things that I've worked with them on. They're really cool, very lovely people, and I think I'm going to put a link to their Instagrams down in the description of this video because they are both very, very talented artists, and I love their drawings very much. And they have posted some of their own artwork of the other NPCs and like characters from this campaign, the campaign that Felix and Kevin are a part of, uh, to their own pages. So yeah, if you want to see more characters like this one from the world of this campaign specifically, or even if you just want to see some good good art in general, uh, then their pages are definitely the place to go for that. You should definitely check them out, please. That would be very cool. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, um, introductions and <laughs> probably embarrassing my friends aside, uh, the reason I wanted to draw Felix today was because in our campaign he's kind of undergoing some character growth at the minute, and I wanted to update his outfit a bit to reflect that. Admittedly, he does not have this outfit that I'm drawing yet in-game, but I really want him to at some point, so it's very much going to be something that I'm on the hunt for next time we play and our characters are anywhere near a shop. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's get into this actual outfit because I had a lot of fun thinking about it and putting it together and there's, there's like, there's, there's thoughts involved and it's fun. So <laughs> when the campaign first began, Felix was joining the party fresh after leaving his job as a royal advisor. Uh, he was a bit of a fancy man, so his outfit kind of reflected that. It was also a lot more on the fancy side and a lot more stiff. Uh, actually, I'll see if I can put his original design on screen right now alongside. So yeah, hopefully you can see. But it was basically um, just a really formal kind of fancy man kind of getup with a waistcoat and a long jacket, all of those yeah, just, just, just very formal, very, very stiff, very formal, very fancy man kind of thing, and do not know how else to explain it. Um, he was also really, really rejecting his warlock powers at the start of the campaign and like actively trying to find a way to get rid of them and to get rid of his patron Kevin. But at the point we're at now in the game, uh, we've we've all been through a couple things, and now Felix is actually starting to lean into the whole squid warlock thing <laughs> as you do i suppose after a while <laughs> the whole outfit anyway was mostly inspired by a really cool pair of boots that one of my mates sent to the campaign group chat um with this really cool like purple tentacle pattern all over them and i, I still have the page they're from bookmarked actually because like they're real and i really want to get a pair um but also when i first saw them i kind of got a flash of inspiration for an outfit that might look pretty cool for felix I realise by this point we are already in deep on my second artwork picture fashion sketch drawing thing for this video, um, <laughs> but hopefully you saw at the very beginning I had a couple of pieces of visual reference pasted directly onto my canvas when I was sketching up the like very most rough ideas for this little fashion exploration. Um, but for the most part, the idea was just like, okay, working around the colour scheme of those cool tentacle boots, let's go ahead and give him an outfit that still says I'm a nerd without being quite as uptight as his original, like, really, really formal costume. So what he ended up with here was a fairly hipstery, kind of nerdy looking combination of pale coloured trousers and a purple jumper pulled over a button-up shirt, with, of course, the tentacle patterned boots to top off the outfit. As is usually my habit whenever I'm trying to design a character's costume, I also tried to limit the amount of colours involved to just kind of a handful, and again mostly it was all inspired by the boots themselves, which were purple, so that's why it's like purple jumper, pale coloured trousers, and then back to purple boots. It kind of divides the sections of the costume design and it makes it really easy to read. It still needed an extra something though, and I did still really like the kind of vibe Felix had from having like that long overcoat in his original outfit. Um, I don't know why exactly or what it is, I guess uh, long coats just kind of really suit him. Uh, at least I think so, they're kind of his thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, wanting to keep that kind of long coat energy in this new outfit, uh, give him something to swish, uh, I ended up deciding that because Felix is embracing his warlock powers now, with all of the kind of tentacle-based abilities he has and all of the spells in his tome uh, kind of taking the shape of water and ink and stuff like that, uh, it might be really cool to give him a long waterproof raincoat as part of his new costume. Uh, kind of like, well, I'm sticking with these powers now, so I may as well wear something that will keep me dry when I use them. Uh, <laughs> That was a very loose rendition of his in-game accent, by the way. Uh, like I mentioned at the start, he's a fancy man and he talks like a fancy man, ipso facto. Um, but unfortunately, even though I'm from England, I, d I don't really have that in my day-to-day -day life. I just put it on when we're playing and it is what it is, but is it posh English? It, all bets are off, you know? <laughs> Anyway, I've also found that between this drawing and like a couple of other ones that I've done in the past, uh, I really like rendering um, this kind of clear, shiny, not quite see-through material. No idea why, uh, it's hardly the easiest thing to render at all, but I guess there's just something about the finished look of it that makes my brain happy, and sometimes that is all the reasoning and explanation you need. 
I think I mentioned as much in my latest bee paint video as well, but I've also been really enjoying experimenting with using uh, like a little bit of a textured brush for my inking recently. I tried it out again here, uh, this is just the standard Paint Tool Side 2 round brush with the texture set to acrylic at maybe 20%, and uh, I think I might be sticking with it. Somehow it gives the line work just like a little bit of bite to it, and I quite like that. I think that's pretty good. Uh, but I tell you what, that's just kind of like another benefit of finding some free time to do personal art like this every now and then, because uh, it tends to make you feel like you do have a lot more room to play around and experiment like that when you're, you know, not doing something for work or doing something professional, or at the very least when you're not doing something that like needs to meet certain parameters and be done in a certain way, as is often the case with, you know, work and like project work. Uh, basically, especially if you do do a lot of art, either professionally or for like school or like anything where there is like some kind of standard that you need to meet with it, uh, I would recommend just sort of like doing your own artwork as well. That probably is super obvious, but like doing your own thing as much as you can whenever you can because it just makes for really good practice without feeling like practice. It feels like time off. I, again, I, I topped this video by saying like, yeah, I, I, I relax from drawing by doing more drawing, and I don't know if that's the normal procedure. I think a lot of people would just play video games, but <laughs> if, if you are of the same ilk as me where you're like, drawing is my downtime, that's great, make use of that. Primarily because it's not going to feel like you're making use of your downtime as much as you are just having fun, because it is fun. But it's also good practice, and now I am repeating myself, and I will get back on track. Uh, but hopefully that made sense. <laughs> Another thing I would recommend anyway, which I don't usually do for some reason, um, maybe because it normally feels like it's too untidy to put into a video or something, uh, is the thing that I mentioned at the very start of this video where I pasted a bunch of reference images onto my canvas. It was really helpful for roughing out the initial costume design, and it was literally just a case of hopping onto Google and searching for, like, purple jumper and clear raincoat, and, like, those didn't look exactly how I imagined or how they ended up looking in the final outfit design here, but being able to see at least a vague representation of all of the pieces you're imagining next to each other before you draw is very, very helpful. Speaking of those reference images though, um, unsurprisingly, the tentacle boots which kicked this whole idea off were the part that took the longest time to render because they were the most detailed, but to be fair, it was pretty relaxing to just kind of go in and colour all the details on the tentacle pattern itself, so it wasn't too bad actually. It was, it was pretty okay. <laughs> The colouring is usually the most relaxing part of any picture, in my opinion, because it's like, oh yeah, nice, the thinking part is over, now I can just kind of sit back and switch off and paint and see all of these nice details come together for the final stage of this drawing, and then it's done, and that's nice as well. Uh, <laughs> Although uh, I did do a little bit more thinking after the camera stopped rolling on this one because I decided that the composition felt a little bit empty, so after I stopped recording my screen, I went back and added a little swirl of squid ink in the background as well as a couple of details that I forgot to put in because I am forgetful. I will always forget something and then have to put it in afterwards. It is just the nature of my artistic process <laughs> and it's very annoying but you know it is what it is and i did remember to put the extra details in this time so that's a win <laughs> for once normally i only notice after i've posted something but no i actually caught it this time so that was pretty good anyway with the addition of those extra details that is this one uh just about finished so thank you very much for joining me today um i hope you've had a good time hearing me ramble quite a bit about my boy felix and seeing his new outfit come together watching the process uh hopefully there was at least one halfway decent bit of costume design advice tucked away in here somewhere as well um but either way as ever feel free to let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments and uh I don't know how much I can mention right now, but some of the big projects that have been keeping me so busy are going to be coming your way in the next few weeks and months and such, so I hope you'll look forward to all that, it's pretty exciting. Um, but for now, I hope you'll all keep on taking it easy and taking care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.